Hi everyone, my name is Nicole McAllister and I'm one of our social workers here at Ironwood Cancer and Research Centers. And we just wanna welcome you to our very first Fun Friday put on by your social work team. We are gonna start a small series every other Friday and um, have some topics that we hope you'll enjoy. Today, we're gonna get to know uh, both of your social workers. So we're gonna have a little chat and talk about some of the work that we do as social workers and how we can support you and meet your needs. But also it's a chance for you to ask any questions that you may have uh, about social work or things at Ironwood we can assist you with. You wanna ask us questions about us or we're gonna chat a little bit and kinda get to know each other a little bit better. We don't always share personal information, but um, today we really just wanna feel comfortable and feel, have you um, feel like you can approach us if you see us around the offices. I think the, the first question we wanted to kind of talk about was how did we become a social worker? So it's kind of a funny story for me. I don't know Jess's story, but I was actually in nursing school and I was almost done with nursing program. And uh, I started going out and doing the clinical uh, locations and kind of meeting with people. And uh, it, it turns out I faint at the sight of blood. <laughs> and so I had a couple of accidents where I fainted uh, while I was at a clinic. And the last one resulted in some stitches. So my advisor pulled me aside and said, I think you might want to find a new career. So I wanted to help people and I wanted to be involved in caring kind of activities. So I took some general courses and I took a social work class and a criminal justice class and I ended up pursuing a criminal justice degree. And I got involved with Child Protective Services, worked there for about 16 years. And then I got my master's degree and I did an internship here at Ironwood back in 2016. And I loved it. I, I knew as soon as I started interning here that I wanted to work here full time. So I volunteered for a while and ran some groups um, and helped out the other social workers that worked here full time. Then I worked here part time for a while. And then in November of 2018, I got a call and they had an opening. I applied and got the job. and happily left the last job to come here. So I, I just love working with people. I, I know they're in a bad situation sometimes when they're here, but if, if I can be a part of making things just feel a little bit easier, then I think that's great. And here's Jessica. Yay. We just uh, introduced ourselves. So if you want to introduce yourself and maybe talk about how you got into social work, it's nice to enjoy the weather before it gets too warm. Okay, next question. How has your job become busier with COVID? I don't have my readers on today. I need to go to the dollar store and get a new one. Um, so the job definitely changed with COVID. I don't know if I would say busier or just different, but for a while there, we were restricted to trying to do as least amount in person as possible. We wanted to keep everyone safe. And so we were only meeting with patients in person if it was very urgent or absolutely necessary. And it was something we absolutely had to do in person. So we had to learn how to do consultations and kind of talk with people on the phone and face-to-face -face and in person is so much easier. You feel um, more comfortable and at ease to kind of share some really important things. You never know what a person's doing on the other end of the line. So, um, but we adjusted and we did a lot of work by phone. We moved our groups to virtual. So that's been kind of ups and downs. Um, some of the patients like it because they don't, I have one who lives in Georgia half of the year so she can um, come and participate no matter if she's in Georgia or she's in Arizona. So that's been really nice. She's been able to maintain that contact, but a lot more telephone work, a lot more telemed appointments. I'm sure patients are getting used to their telemed appointments with their doctors here. Jess, can you hear us now? I can, it kept me out. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Do you wanna introduce yourself and kind of talk about how you got into social work? Yeah, of course, I'm Jessica. Um, I cover the East Valley offices. Um, I always say that I just kind of stumbled into social work. It was never on my radar. Um, I had started working at Child Protective Services after I graduated from undergrad. Um, 
and it was going to be like my year off before I took my LSATs to go to law school. Um, and so I started working for CPS and still at that time was like, oh, I don't want to be a social worker, um, but was actually loving the job um, and ended up getting, deciding to get my master's in social work. I decided I didn't want to go the law school route. And then here I am. So. Well, good. We have some questions. So if you look in the chat, we're just answering some of them. I kind of talked about how our job changed with COVID. Uh, do you want to talk about what your favorite class or group that Ironwood, Ironwood offers is? Um, well, right now we don't have it because of COVID, but when we did, my favorite, favorite class was the drums, rhythm, and relaxation. It was on Tuesdays, and I looked forward to every Tuesday evening um, to just be able to drum and vibe to the music. And it was a really good stress reliever. I think a lot of times when I would share it with patients, they would always be really nervous about, oh, I don't, you know, I'm not mus musically inclined or something. But you totally don't have to be just banging on the drum or like getting a tambourine or something. That was definitely my favorite class. So I'm really missing it. Oh, I know. And I don't know, that one's kind of hard to do virtually, I think. So that's yeah. why we haven't really, you don't get that experience. Yeah, like for sure. Whatever. Yeah. I think my favorite was the sound bowl meditation. And I know we're not doing that one, but I have found some pretty good videos on YouTube with sound bowls and kind of like the singing bowls is what they call it to do meditation too. But still, and when it was in person, it was so nice that you'd feel like the vibration from the bowls kind of all throughout you. So that was nice. I, I really enjoy the support groups though. And yeah. it's nice to kind of connect with those people and get to know them and kind of see them progress good or bad and be there to kind of support them along the way. I don't think I can pick a favorite because, okay, do you want to pick one of the next questions? And uh, I only see one on my end. The one I see is what is the difference between um, social work and therapy? Um, so, for therapists, so the social workers can do therapy. If you're a licensed um, master social worker, licensed clinical social worker, you are able to do therapy. We essentially though are not necessarily therapists. And I typically correct people when people call me a therapist. Um, our training is different. So with therapists that are either a licensed professional counselor or licensed associate counselor, their training specifically is in regards to more focus on specific modalities, um, different theories, those types of things. So you're getting more of that, um, you know, specific training about CBT, DBT, ABA, those different acronym therapies that people like to throw out. As social work, we are taught like a person in systems theory framework where it's about not just a theory, but the person, their environment, and looking at how those different elements work in conjunction. So while we're still able to do therapy, sometimes our approach is different based on the training. That's my, that's how I always explain it. Nicole, would you add something different? No, I think that's a, just a great explanation for it. I don't think either one of us claims to be a therapist, um, claim to be social workers and we're proud, especially this month, it's National Social Work Month. So, yay. <laughs> um, here's a good question. It says, based on all the patients you've talked to, what is the one thing you would say to a patient with a recent cancer diagnosis? So, I know one of the things that I do is like when I get asked to do initial consultation with like a new patient is I never make promises that they're going to be okay. I never promise that the doctors are going to get it all because it just really depends and you don't want to make false promises. But I do promise them that we're here for them and we will be there throughout their journey and we're going to support them in whatever way we can. And if they're having emotional needs, we can address that. If they have tangible needs like grocery and things of that nature or if they need some community assistance or a wig or that we'll work with them and try to meet those needs as best as possible and even if they just need to kind of vent one day and um feel like that's all, all right they need that new, neutral person who's not going to be upset or kind of emotionally respond we're there for you they have a good team and we're going to do our very best um along the way what kind of things do you say to new patients um I say is just to give yourself some grace 
and that it's okay to not have it all figured out because I think once you get diagnosed with cancer, it's like, go, 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 lab, scans, tests, do this, do this, do this. And it's super overwhelming. And I think friends and family too, as well intended as they can be, they start Googling and it's like, oh, I saw on Google, you should do this and you should do this. And it becomes information overload. So you always say it's okay to just stop, take a moment and give yourself some grace. And it's okay if you don't know. It's okay if you don't know where you're going to kind of start or how things are going to end up. Um, and just letting them know that we're here as a support. You know, they're part of our family now. Um, and we're just here to kind of help them along the way and love and support them in whatever way that's meaningful and honoring to them. So that's usually kind of my go-to. Okay, they want to know what kind of support does the social work team offer to patients? Um, we do a bunch of things. Um, oh my gosh, advanced directives, which is so helping with the medical power of attorney, a living will, um, which is different than a last will and testament, which is kind of more, you know, in regards to like your assets or financials or those things. Um, community-based resources and supports, whether it's accessing some of the nonprofit organizations that assist financially, whether it's trying to get people roped up with transportation, assisting with an access application, social security disability application, um, just emotional support. Um, I know one of my favorite things to do when I get an opportunity is just go talk to patients that are sitting in the treatment room. Um, and just being there to, how are you today? Can I get you a warm blanket? Can I get you some coffee or those types of things? So we are not a, I feel like we're very diverse in the fact that we have a robust offering of things that we do. Um, and it's really, um, dependent on the patient. We don't do the same thing for every single patient because everybody is different. Yeah. When it, when someone asks me that question, I always kind of just respond, I'm your superhero problem solver because come to me and tell me what your problems are and we'll fix them, whether it's something we do or who we can connect you with. But yeah. it's such a broad thing uh, to ask because we do so much, a variety of things, disability, long-term care supports, uh, palliative care. Sometimes we assist patients getting connected to that. So food boxes, just, yeah, all those community resources, but we just, uh, the, definitely that emotional support, I think, is the best way to, to uh, do a big grouping of that. Um, it says, what is the best way for a patient to reach out to your team for support? So there's, there's a couple ways that you can reach out. You can email us um, directly, uh, Jessica Wells or Nicole McAllister, or you can email socialwork at ironwoodcrc.com. You can also contact our department and speak to our support coordinator, Sierra Endicott, by calling 480-314-6660. And another great way to get a hold of Jess and I is if you see us in the hallway, stop us, say hi, and yeah. introduce yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's see. What if I need my superhero problem solver after office hours? Ooh, I'll let you answer that one. <laughs> um, typically so, I mean, I think it depends on what the need is, right? So um, there is a crisis line that is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, if you are in some type of mental health, behavioral health crisis. I always say, don't wait for us. Um, and crisis is not a, what, 8 to 4.30, 8 to 5 type of thing. So I would say, um, you know, if you think you might have a need in that regard, contact us so we can link you up with a crisis line so that you can have that available to you. Otherwise, if you, you know, if it's after 5 o'clock and you realize, oh, hey, I need to ask a question about, you know, a palliative care, definitely just call, leave a message on our voicemail and we'll give you a call back once we're in the office. So our voicemail is always available for you to leave voicemails on. Um, but again, if it's a crisis situation, I would absolutely either call crisis, um, contact 911 or go to your local emergency room if it's a mental health, behavioral health type of crisis. Absolutely. What do you hope to accomplish with your patients? Number, number one, I just want them to feel better. I want them to feel like they're not alone. 
I don't want them to have to worry about little things about like, how am I going to get to treatment? I just want them to worry about getting through the treatments and, and, and those little other things that we can take care of. But to, if they can feel just a little bit better, feel supported and not feel alone through this process, then I think we've done, done our job. That's the number one thing I want to accomplish. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I can just touch one person's life. I think there's like some poem about like someone walking on the beach and there's like starfish or something and they're picking them up, trying to like throw them back in the ocean. And people are like, oh, you'll be out here forever. I'm totally botching the story. But the point is, it's like, oh, I made a difference to the life of the one that I was able to get back in there. That's kind of my thing. I want to know that I'm making a difference in somebody's life, whether it's just sitting present with them, just giving them a smile or just letting them know, hey, you're not alone. Um, that's kind of my bread and butter and what I hope to accomplish. I love that. It's the starfish story. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Um, do you offer support for the family of patients? We do. We actually have a caregiver support group, which is held the third Saturday of every month from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And I highly encourage all of my caregivers um, to get connected with that group. It is absolutely, absolutely awesome. It is the one group we don't allow patients to participate in, though. Um, but we have the caregiver support group. Um, Nicole and I also facilitate the CLIMB program, which is Children's Lives Include Moments of Bravery. It is on hiatus right now because of COVID, but we're hoping that, you know, maybe late fall we'll be able to maybe get a class going. Um, and so that is for children and adolescents whose parents have been impacted um, by cancer. I um, mean, it runs for six weeks. There's different activities every single week. There's a parent component as well too. So there is um, support that's available to families. Jessica and I went through a very extensive training for that CLIMB course. And so we are able to work with patients whose children may be struggling with their diagnosis. And so even if we can't do the class with them, um, definitely reach out to us. We can give advice. There's even some really good books and some articles and some information out there, a lot of resources, but we can give you some tips on how to talk to your kids based on their age and kind of maybe what behaviors to expect. Um, I know we've met with kids or seen kids or talked to kids before, depending on their age and the parents kind of involvement. So we just want to be here for you and your family or your caretaker, even if it's a friend. Um, so, uh, Jess, do you want to answer a couple of questions that maybe aren't related just to social work, but about each other so that we can get to know each other a little bit and for okay. everyone to get to know us? Okay. What you got? Okay. What? I, both of us are travel bugs. We both love to travel. I know that. Um, but what's your favorite vacation you've ever taken? Oh gosh. <laughs> It's so hard because I love all of the places that I've traveled for different reasons. Um, I'd say the time I spent in the Dominican Republic, um, just because on the beach they had um, these little like, what do you call them? They're basically kind of beds, um, but they had like the little canopy over them. Okay. But they literally would then bring you, it was an all-inclusive resort, so they would just wait on you hand and foot while you were there. Like, they would bring you food, they would bring you drinks, like, they would bring you a cooling towel, all these things. And I was like, I never want to go home. It was, um, it, up. <laughs> yeah, it was perfect. And then because of um, the conversion ratio with money, like five American dollars was almost $300 in Dominican pesos. So you feel like you're kind of like a baller giving somebody $5 as a tip and they would get really excited and bring you more food. So like <laughs> I'd go out there with like 20 bucks and feel like I'm this like wealthy millionaire or something. And it's just like $20. So that was, that was a really good time. Super relaxing. I think I'm torn between two, I, but I, I will pick one just for this, but I would say I, I went to Belize and I loved Belize. I spent a week in the jungle and then like a week on one of the keys in the islands. 
and uh, I loved the jungle. It was surprising. Um, the roads are very interesting to drive on. We rented a car and they have these speed bumps that are very big and they're kind of flat because they use them as sidewalks and uh, was trying to keep an eye on it, but we had just been out 24 hours with our flight and I was you know, slowing down every time we'd see them and I was going pretty fast on the highway and all of a sudden I hit one and we went airborne and like everything <laughs> went flying up in the air in the car and I was like, that's so much fun, let's do it again. But um, we found some really interesting things in the jungle. Like we were driving around one day and there was this blue and white barn and it said ice cream on the front. And we went there and it was a couple from Wisconsin, I believe, that had retired in Belize and they they missed their ice cream. So they started importing um, milk and they made Wisconsin-based ice cream in the middle of the rainforest. Oh, that's and, cool. <laughs> Yeah, it was really neat and it was delicious. Um, and it was perfect because it was in August, so it was very hot and humid. But then we also found there's a large population of Mennonites that have relocated there. And so we were driving around the jungle another day and we smelled cinnamon really strong. And we found this little bakery and they served the best breakfast. And you get this big cinnamon roll and eggs and fruit and vegetable and juice, coffee, like all the stuff you wanted. And it was like three or $4 and they would bake bread and cinnamon rolls for the resorts in in the jungle in that area and so it was kind of just neat to experience there's nothing that was real super fancy uh, there it was very relaxed very safe feeling but it was just kind of neat to see the jungle versus um you know here <laughs> it was a different yeah. climate different landscape we actually did a jaguar experience at their zoo where they lock the jaguar up and then they take you and put you in an enclosure, like in a cage kind of, and then they let the jaguar out. And so he comes out and he's like walking around you. He gets up on top. You get to feed him some chicken. And Wait, um, like I touch his eye, right? we were inside the cage. Oh, okay. and he's laying, he's laying on top and um, we got to feed him some chicken and like touch his foot and his tail. They're like, just don't touch his mouth. I'm like, well, that's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But they, he would did do somersaults for like treats and different things. He was a rescue that had gotten hit on a highway and they brought him in and he couldn't be released back into the wild, but they kept him and it helps raise money for conservation like purposes. So I loved, I loved Belize. The islands were gorgeous too. I mean, turquoise water, pina coladas, what, what more can you ask for? So. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Okay. What do you got for me? Um... Well, I know that you and I usually talk about Shark Week. We're lovers of Shark Week. What's your favorite shark? Oh, so many choices. Yes, we both do love Shark Week. Um, I have to say the Great White. I love watching those shows during Shark Week where they're breaching out of the water and they're going after the seals in Cape Town. I love when they bust open the cages when the divers think they're all safe. Um, I mean, I wouldn't really want to like see one but kind of want to go in a cage um and see one up close as long as it was a good cage um but I think great white what about you same great white. Um, I've actually been shark diving before um not oh. great in a cage not with great white so it was with Galapagos sharks um and it was off um the coast of Hawaii and it was okay. an amazing experience it was first thing in the morning when it's like their feeding time. So there are so many sharks in the water and it was so majestic to see. Um, and so it's definitely on my bucket list to do the Great White Adventure, which allows you to do um, cage diving with Great White Sharks. So yeah. my mother is not thrilled that that's something that I'm planning to do. But um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I think that'll be a good time. Have you uh, seen any good movies recently? Um, I have not. I think the last movie I saw um, was Soul when it came out on Disney. Um, that animated movie with like Jamie Foxx. He was the, um, he played the voice of the main character. I think that was the last movie I saw. Mine, I think, was uh, Palmer. It's the new Justin Timberlake movie and it's oh. on Hulu um, or Apple TV. Sorry, Apple TV. And he just gets out of prison after being in prison for like 12 years. And he's trying to 
find his way in the community and life and kind of adjust to, you know, life as a convicted felon um, and struggles you face there. But he, the one person that befriends him and shows him the most like kindness and support is like a little kid. He's about, I think, 10 years old or so. And he's kind of got his own special way of life. And so they kind of become this unusual friendship and there's some funny moments. There's some cute moments, definitely a drama, um, but it, it's a very feel good movie. So, um, and I love Justin Timberlake. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any books you're reading lately? Um, oh my gosh, I've read so many good books lately. Um, I'm currently reading um, Big Little Lies. I think that's what it's called. Okay. Um, I've been trying to read more for leisure. So I think I liked um, Where the Crawdads Sing. That was really good. Um, I also read The Last Mrs. Parish. That one was really good. It was one of those where like, I'm reading and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> it's just like, it pulls you in. Um, I also read Behind Her Eyes, which I guess is now a, I think it's on Netflix. Oh my goodness, yeah. so I watched it. So I read the book not knowing it was going to be like a whole Netflix thing. And so then I watched it and I feel like it fell a little bit flat. I'm not a huge, I try to not watch movies that are based off books and I've read the books just because like I tear the movie to pieces. And so while it was good, it didn't give you all of the intimate details that the book did explaining the whole like, like that process that they were going through. I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it, but you missed out on some details. Um, I'm reading If You Tell by Greg Olson. I just started it, so I'm only like a chapter deep, but um, I, like you, I'm trying to get in the habit of reading more when it's not like a textbook or research or, or something, but um, it's basically a story about two sisters who bond and come together to cover up a murder. And the person that does the murder is a little interesting as well. So um, it was on New York Times bestseller list. It was on the Oprah list. So I figured it's gotta be good, yeah. but I'm in chapter one and it's good so far. Uh, so we'll see. Good. I see, I see one more question that came up um, from the community and that's, do we offer grief services? Um, so typically we refer out for our grief services. Hospice of the Valley has amazing grief support groups. They also offer individual counseling for grief and they have an amazing program called, um, it's, a, it's called the New Song Center and it's specifically for children who are going through the grief process as well. Um, so the, we usually refer out to Hospice of the Valley. You do not have to have had received services from that organization to participate in the grief support groups. Um, so if you just Google Hospice of the Valley under our services, it says, um, I think grief and bereavement it gives you all the information about how to access the counseling, the support groups, and the new song center for children. Yeah, I think I have the exact same answers. I, I talk to people a little bit about some of that, and, but definitely they have the best like set of programs and it's free to patients and it's very convenient and they can start off with just a phone call and they can kind of do it at their own pace when they're ready. So it doesn't have to be within a certain amount of time after someone passes away it could be a year later that you start having you know kind of a struggle with grief and and that's normal and that's okay so you can refer anytime and we can refer you or you can call yourself mm -hmm. yeah any other questions I think, I think one of the things that we just wanted to kind of talk about too before we wrap up unless there's more is so this is a small series that we're just starting off with four classes. Today was the first one and it's just getting to know yourself. In two weeks is gonna be the next one. So it'll be every other week um, over the next uh, March and April. And uh, the next one is gonna be building your own herb garden at home. And I'm gonna be doing that. I'm so excited. I'm actually gonna pot plants live with you guys and 
I've been spending some time with one of our local nurseries, kind of learning how to take this black thumb and make it green. I got some really good information from our dietitians about herbs that are good for cancer patients and ones that are easily done in the home. And do they need a lot of sun? Do they need a little sun? Do they need no sun? Which ones are really hard to grow? Which ones? are easy to grow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the easy ones, but we're going to talk about a lot of stuff and we're actually going to plant some plants so that you can see that. I have one of our nurses helping too. And then Jess, you've got the next two after that. Yes, so we're going to make a body scrub. Um, so the ingredients that you'll need for that will be posted. Um, it's nothing extravagant. It's all probably ingredients that you probably have um, in your house already. Um, and if not, you can get them from like your local, your local fries or bashes or sprouts or whatever. And then we're going to be doing a journaling class after that. Um, I hear so often that people are like, oh, I don't like journaling or those things. Um, and so I recently just went through a very intensive, it was an eight week um, course on just journaling techniques and stuff like that. And it was so transformative for me. Um, but you know, my disclaimer is I love journaling. I've been journaling since I was a small child. It's my jam, but there's different ways and techniques of journaling that I thought were really cool that aren't what people necessarily think of. So I'm going to share some of those. I think sometimes people think they have to be these like award-winning memoirs that are written down when the journal could just be like, today was a rough day or three things I'm grateful for today or something I want to work on. That's a form of journaling. So I'm really excited about that and to share some of that information with you guys. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm excited too. And we just want everyone to know that anyone in the community can attend any of our events. So please share the information and um, check out our videos on YouTube. We have a whole library of things that we um, have talked about, had the doctors do educational talks on. We have Tai Chi, yoga, watercolor, painting. I, I've shared in some of my groups before that I've, I tried our New England lighthouse watercolor paint and um, it didn't come out like the artist, but um, it was a lot of fun and, and I'll try it again. But um, we really wanted to do these fun Fridays to engage with you and have some kind of really lighthearted topics so that you can have something to participate in that isn't just talking about cancer, but it's kind of learning something new. And it's been fun for Jess and I to kind of learn about some of this stuff and get ready for it. And hopefully things go well and we'll keep doing some of these in the future with some new topics. So. Yeah. Anything else you want to say, Jess, before we sign off? Um, that's it. Other than thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it and you hope that you guys will kind of stick with us through these fun Fridays. If you guys do have any ideas of topics, please let Nicole and I know we would love to hear. Um, we're here to help support you guys. So anything that we can do, just let us know. All right, bye everyone. Bye. Thanks for joining. Bye.